The book's pages fluttered to the beginning once again. Faster than before, and he fell. The clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Renardo knew that using it could go catastrophically wrong. But he was sure he could figure out how to use it safely. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Iblis Stone was hidden there. It was a dangerous artifact. It could corrupt its user into a bloodthirsty monster. Maybe he could find a way to use it, to take its power without surrendering to its wickedness. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renato had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion, and he had a gut feeling that he needed to use that to his advantage. was windswept desert. No one went there except ostriches and ostrich hunters. The Iblis Stone. It would whisper promises in his ear, offering power for blood. But this time, Bernardo was sure he could master it. And so, Bernardo went ostrich hunting. Every child could sing verses about the Sky Ripper, but ancient codices held hints of other things. A stone that ate souls, a ruby that drank blood, a jewel only a righteous man could give away. Were all these things the Iblis Stone? Long hidden in a buried temple, another ancient item that was only resurfacing now, drawn up from the deeps by the Emperor's horrific rituals, What was he doing here? The last time, the stone had fought him for possession of his own soul. for a way in. Good. Then he hadn't come too late.
working spectacularly well, thought Renardo. of amazing, beautiful vixens wearing no clothes at all, and something more useful. There had to be some way to use the Iblis Stone. It was old, wasn't it? People are so much cleverer now, and Renato was pretty sure he was cleverer than most people. could not get past this point. Obviously the temple builders knew how to deal with tomb raiders. Actually, such a hard puzzle to come to think of it. It was a stone of the purest blackness. It reflected no light, like a void made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can make you mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty, That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch, but they had been close once, and he had a sneaking suspicion the gem would try to control him. Why not capture the core of Skyripper instead? 
It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent emperor to power his greatest weapon. What's the core? Said the stone anxiously. But even though Renardo knew how evil the gem was, he had a clever plan for dealing with it. Why was he listening to a talking rock? Ah, but the rock had a point. If the stone could truly turn him into a powerful warrior, he could defeat the Emperor with the very weapon the wicked old toad had sought for himself. To be a hero, you had to sacrifice old friends sometimes, especially when they've become enemies. As he placed the impossibly black crystal in his gauntlet, Renata had a sudden vision. Charred fields covered in dead ravens below a black sun. Was it the time of the lost gods before the transcendent emperor? Was it the future? Feliz. It whispered. Take the power. He could feel the stone's hunger for souls. Its thirst for blood. All right, I get it. This was going to be interesting. on Zenobia's island were no match for Renardo. They screamed as the stones sucked out their souls. And with each death, he felt stronger. Take the power, the stone told him. with Zenobia than he'd done with the core, could he? Ha! Bet you never saw that coming. Zenobia was waiting for Renardo. She was alone, confident as always. Fire danced at the tips of her claws. Are you here to surrender? She seemed as cocksure as he felt. But she didn't know he had the stone. And I've missed you too, love. He chuckled. She spotted the stone and bolted without another word.
Finally, Renato caught up to her. He had never seen her scared before. At school, she'd been the determined, brave one. Now her eyes were wide, frightened. He didn't like seeing her this way. Kill her, whispered the stone. You cannot win your rebellion without it. Please. No, said Zenobia. Not that way. Oh, they had been so close once. Could he really feed her soul to his demonic gem? But if he spared her, he would not get the full power of the stone. Oh, how could he be the hero he wanted to be? With a flick of his wrist, he slashed Zenobia's throat. Her eyes widened even more. And then the light went out of them. Bernardo felt amazing. Power was rushing into him like water from a burst dam. Oh, such brilliance. Exalted the Iblis stone. Tasty. He felt a bit bad about killing her. He was pretty sure she still loved him. But needs must when the devil drives. Renato returned to the Farfarer and set a course for the Nexus. The Empire had a communication outpost there. He could call the Emperor directly. It was time to seize the outpost and let the Emperor know what he had done. The Nexus was beautiful. He never realized how beautiful. Everything glowed. The wind was so sweet. The sun so soft. The stones so warm. The black raven feathers. Black feathers. Suddenly, his eyes are filled with them. He's falling through smoke under a dead sun. A voice calls him home. This is a vision. Is this the time of the lost world? Or the future? No matter. What mattered now was killing his way to the Imperial outpost and challenging the Emperor from there. Why would anyone put his slinky collection in a strongbox, thought Renardo. The magic something? Oh, and there was something else. Up ahead was Lupino. What was he doing here? Bernardo! <laughs> hey, buddy! Hey there, old buddy! Please don't kill me! Why would I kill you? asked Bernardo, although he had been thinking about it. Well, uh, you've become... Uh, no, no, no. I mean, no disrespect at all here. Uh, kind of evil? Maybe uh, you should... I don't know... Go to the mountains to have a think? See if maybe you're sure the stone is not all that healthy a thing to keep? I suppose you want it, Bernardo said, and poked Lapino in the chest for emphasis. Oh, had he just killed Lapino? Oh, damn it. Go to the outpost, use their fire speaker, tell the Emperor what he'd done, and then he'd go to the secret rebel base. Let them know he was ready to lead them to victory.
Renato rampaged through the Imperial outpost like a water buffalo rampaging. At the last moment, he remembered not to kill the far speaker toad. After all, he wanted a word with the Emperor. But there was only silence. Ha <laughs> ha! The Emperor was scared, like little girl. Well, he would gather the rebel army and slaughter the Imperial fleet. Yes! Applauded the Iblistone. Tremendous. Then the Emperor would have to answer his far speaker, wouldn't he? Who are you? Asked a distant voice that sounded uncomfortably like Zenobia. What have you become? The mountains. Go to the mountains, urged another that sounded a bit like Lupino. What are you doing? Demanded the Iblistone. I need to think, Renato told it. You're not good at good thinking, said the Iblistone. But he set sail for the mountains, where he could be alone with his thoughts. Why were there raven scouts here in the empty mountains? Was there nowhere he could find peace and quiet? There were other ravens here too. Shadowy ones, transparent, lining the path. Ghosts. They cawed as he passed but they didn't try to stop him. Spectators. Had he really killed that many ravens? Then he saw her, Zenobia. She was a ghost too. She ran off when she saw him. How could a ghost be afraid? He followed her. He had to. Renato. Renato followed Zenobia's ghost. Had he gone mad? 
seeing ghosts? Was she running from him or leading him somewhere? He'd come here to be alone, but he'd never been less alone in his life. Every raisin he had slain haunted these rocks. Was this who he was? He was terribly good at killing. He was an adventurer. Or was that just another word for killer? Whisper the stone. How about a floating platform that simply just goes to the top? job we had to do. The rebellion. Was there a battle coming soon? Would there be ravens to kill? Even an emperor? Such killing. Much wow. Oh, he'd never been so excited. At the end of the mountain path, Zenobia awaited him. Why did you kill me? She said. I was your prisoner, and I loved you. I needed the power, he said. Haven't you heard? There's a war on. Then what's your excuse for killing me? Asked his old friend Lupino, stepping out of the shadows. Because a filthy traitor? Said Renardo. For once, Lupino didn't reply. The demon... The demon has twisted you, said Zenobia. Abandon the stone. You've lost too much already. Her words bit deeper than any sword ever had. So he shook his head, and once again swung his blade through her and Lupino. It had to all mean something. If he gave up the stone now, he would have sacrificed Zenobia and Lupino for nothing. So, Renato set course for the Imperial fleet, where he would end it all. The Emperor. The war. The madness. Renato boarded an Imperial ship. No one could stop him slashing his way towards the Emperor. Yes, that was right. To give up now would be to lose everything for nothing. But if he could liberate the land from the Mad Emperor, 
and he could give up the stone in peace. And those were absolutely his own thoughts, not the stone manipulating him, right? Oh, yes, exulted the stone. He could hear a tiny voice within him. Don't kill the Emperor. The stone will eat your soul. Was it madness? I have to kill the Emperor, he told himself. That's what it meant to be a hero. To do what had to be done, no matter how terrible the cost. Promise the stone. The tiny voice, whatever it was, was silent. He couldn't see ghosts around him, but he could feel them. If he gave up now, they would be angry. They would have all died for nothing. Who could give up this kind of power? Could anyone? Well, he was just a fox with a talent for swordplay. How had this burden come to him? The Emperor offered the sword. Then, peace. Yes, peace. That is what he wanted. Soon, he'd confront the Emperor. Again. This time, he'd make an end of him. He'd screwed up last time, but he had a good feeling about this time. Cowering in front of his ship. No, please don't kill me, croaked Emperor Isengrim III. Here, take the crown. I, 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 I don't want it anymore. You must kill him. Why do you have his troops? You must send us that Please, have mercy. 
The rebellion uh, is, is one. Or, 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 or you could be emperor. Uh, uh, I'll just go be uh, a scientist uh, or, or minstrel or sell gummy bears. Yeah, I promise not to bother you. It's your moment. With all the love he'd ever had for Zenobia, for Lupino, for the kit foxes he would never have, Renato raised his sword. And Renato plunged his sword into his own chest. Wait. What? Renato screamed as his life force ebbed into the stone and surged back into him and ebbed out and surged back in. Screamed the stone. It began to heat up. What have you done? The stone began to glow. It became white hot. It became lava. Nice knowing you, said Renato, as the lava ran like butter. And he died. Oh, again? But he already had all the secrets he needed. He was sure of that. He must have not used them the right way. Ah, what was the best, worst mistake he could make? Probably trusting that traitor Lupino.